Hey guys, what's going on? I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about another physical shoot 'em up on the Nintendo Switch. Um, this one kind of flew past my radar. I just found out about it recently, picked it up. I've uh, been playing it and I want to talk a little bit about it. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Shmup Collection on the Nintendo Switch was developed by Astroport and published by Pixelheart. The North American print run was limited to 5,000 copies and indicated on the back side of the packaging here you can see. I got number 1,234 out of 5,000. Uh, this game is pretty hard to find from retailers as I picked mine up off of eBay for $40. I have seen it uh, at videogamesnewyork.com for $34.99 plus shipping. But it won't be something you see from Best Buy or even at the time of this recording from Amazon. There is a Japanese and PAL version as well, um, and you can find there some various different retailers online. The collection consists of three different shoot 'em ups, all of which were previously released on Steam several years ago. The three games are quite different from one another, which brings a pretty good amount of variety to this collection. This collection also includes the original ports for some of these games, as well as an upgraded version as well, where it's the same exact game, but has a slightly graphical upgrade. So you'll get Armed 7 as well as Armed 7 DX, Cetasius as well as Cetasius Next, and then Wolf Flame. So I will give you a brief summary of the three games and then give my overall opinion of the collection at the end. We'll start with Armed 7 DX. This is the upgraded version of Armed 7, which was originally released on Steam back in March of 2015. This is a side-scrolling mecha shooter where you control a large mech through seven stages. You get to set your mech's loadout at the beginning of the game, selecting between four main weapons, sub-weapons, and charged weapons. The charge time of your charged weapon will be determined by your loadout. The charged weapon you select as well as the main and sub-weapons will help to contribute to the charge time. Once you start, you can fire your main weapon in one of three different directions as you can manipulate this by maneuvering, moving your mech up or down and then locking your weapon into place. You will also acquire weapon and shield power-ups along your way to assist you in battle. The stages are pretty short with a good variety of enemies. And the boss battles are not wonderful, but they are unique from one another and enjoyable. The soundtrack is not bad, but unfortunately it's hard to hear with the disproportionately loud and wretched sound effects. The gameplay overall is pretty smooth and controls well. This game is pretty enjoyable and, and reminds me of a poor man's Einhander from the original PlayStation. Not near that quality, but a small resemblance. Moving on to Cetasius next. And this is the upgraded version of Cetasius, which was originally released on Steam way back in December of 2011. This is more of a traditional side-scrolling spaceship shooter that will remind you more of the Gradius or Darius series. You can select your loadout between each stage and this part is especially similar to Gradius. They have a main weapon then two sub weapons that you can alternate between. You also have a charge weapon in this game as well. Playing through stages will unlock additional weapons that you can select. There are several different items you can pick up along the way ranging from speed, shield, and weapon power-ups. This game will focus a lot more on maneuvering around and dealing with the environmental elements as well as enemies. Although the Gradius series is far from my favorite style of shooter, this is by far my favorite game in this collection. As the soundtrack, sound effects, stage design, graphics, visuals, and bosses are all the best and most polished of the three games in this collection. The game doesn't do anything really great but it is overall a solid game and fun to play. The last game on this collection is Wolf Flame, which is a vertical scrolling shooter. This is the only game in this collection that does not have an upgraded version. This is a port of the original game which was released on Steam back in April of 2016. I tend to prefer vertical over horizontals, although horizontals have been closing the gap of late. This game, especially the stage and enemy design, reminds me a lot of Braden Trad on the Sega Genesis, which I reviewed recently on the channel. The big selling point here are the little drones that you acquire. You basically pick, pick up one at a time, and they are marked left or right, and different colors distinguish different power-ups. 
And I like how you can have different drones on each side of you, which was an interesting gameplay mechanic. You can power up the drones as well as pick up bombs and collectibles, which are way too similar to the Raiden series. I mean, it's, it's just almost like a straight knockoff. The gameplay is pretty solid and responsive. I mean, the game plays fine and there is fun to be had from it. What holds this game back is the fact that it feels pretty generic. I mean, they copy the Raiden series too much in my opinion. There is not enough variety as far as stage design. The soundtrack is alright, but just sounds generic as well. And the sound effects are pathetic. They don't hurt your ears like an ARM 7, but they don't have enough weight to them, making the destruction of enemies feel less gratifying. So overall this collection is just alright. I think there is a good variety here. No game is really a must own, but they are all very much playable and decent experiences. If you are a physical collector, then $40 is not a bad price here, although I've seen the game listed here for $70-$80, and unless the game becomes collectible because of its limited quantity, then that is way too much for what you're getting here. These games are all available on the Nintendo eShop as well at $14.99 for the entire collection or $6.99 individually. I hope you guys found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.